Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be demonstrating a migration from a Windows Zerto Virtual Manager over to the Linux Zerto Virtual Manager. Um, this is going to be on a standard Zerto install with one NIC on the ZVM. Um, and we're going to do this on both the protected and the recovery site. So a couple of prerequisites before you get started here is, first of all, you're going to want to make sure that your Windows ZVM is at version 9.7 update 4 patch 2. Uh, once you're there, you're going to go to MyZerto, download the Linux appliance, which is an OVF file, uh, deploy that OVF to each vCenter that you have a ZVM installed in that you want to migrate over to Linux, and then go ahead and power it up. Once it's powered up, what we're going to do is we're going to log in. Since it's our first time to log in, uh, we're going to be changing the default password. Uh, if you don't know what the default password is, you can find it in the, the documentation for the Zerto Virtual Manager appliance which I'll link in the description below. So once you've changed your default password, you're gonna be taken to a screen here where it says it's initializing. Uh, this is gonna take a few minutes. So what I'm gonna do is switch over to my re recovery site and start configuring that ZVMA. Again, I'll log in here, uh, change the default password, and then wait for it to also initialize. So while we're waiting for those two appliances to fully initialize, I'm gonna log into Zerto uh, in both my protected and my recovery site, just to take note of what the current state is of the environment, verify if there are any errors that exist prior to the migration, uh, make sure all the, both sites are connected, my VPGs are performing well. And the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna be able to compare what it looks like post-migration uh, once we're running fully on the Linux appliances. Okay, looks like our protected site is ready. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit seven in the appliance manager menu. We're gonna enable SSH. SSH is gonna be required for the migration utility to connect to the Linux appliance when it does its migration work. The next thing we're gonna do is apply a static IP address uh, to configure the IPs on these. Just hit two from the appliance manager menu and then enter your static IP address configuration. Once you've entered your network settings, what we're going to do is uh, save the configuration and allow the appliance to reboot. Then we'll switch over to the recovery site, ZVMA, and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll enable SSH, we'll add the static IP address, and then we'll let it reboot after we save it. Now I'm gonna log back into the appliance and from the appliance manager menu, I'm gonna hit one just to display the current network settings uh, to make sure I didn't do, have any typos before we get started. And 
And once we verify the settings on both, you can go ahead and close the tab to the console um, after you log out um, because we're no longer going to need to do any work at that level. Now what we'll do here is we're going to go to the Windows ZVM on the protected side. Uh, we'll just open that up. I've already downloaded the migration utility to the server. So I'm just going to go run it from where I downloaded it to. It may take a few seconds for it to load, but once it does, you're going to be greeted with a readme link. Now we're going to have to click on this in order to proceed. You can see once I clicked on it, the next button lit up. It'll open a browser. Just go ahead and close it, or you can read it if you haven't already read the documentation. Then we're going to plug in the IP address for that Linux appliance, as well as the password. Click on that validate SSH connectivity button to make sure that the connection's open. And then we'll click next to move on to the next screen. Here you're going to enter a temporary IP address for this Windows ZVM because the migration utility is going to put its current IP address onto the Linux appliance, which will then take its place. So during this process, as the IP address is being changed to that alternative IP address, uh, you're going to get disconnected. So just reconnect your RDP session to that new IP address you specified. Once we're back in, we'll see that the ZVM appliance services are starting up and we are almost done here. Now this is completed. You can see that the IP address that the migration utility is directing you to is the same IP address you used to go to for the user interface. And we can see here the alternate IP is on the Windows machine now, so we are basically done with it. Um, at this point, you can minimize it, you can shut it down. Um, we're not going to be using it anymore. Since this was the old screen I had up, uh, I'm just going to refresh it. Now we're going to get a brand new connection. And when we log into it, it'll be like logging in for the first time. So we're going to have to choose a new password. As soon as we're in, you can see that the VRAs are still installed. Everything is still intact. However, you will see some active alerts uh, because the system was down for a while. Um, basically what's happening right now is Zerto self-healing. It's trying to contact its peer, which is the recovery site ZVM. Um, as soon as everything catches back up, we'll start to see everything turn green again. The only alerts we'll see at this point are basically going to tell you that the VRAs need upgrades. So let's go ahead and upgrade these VRAs to the latest version. As soon as they are completed, we'll give Zerto a few more minutes uh, because they do need to be rebooted. Uh, so they'll show a disconnect at first. Uh, but once they're back up, everything will turn green again. And then we can start moving on to the recovery site. Okay, and as we see, this should clear up pretty quickly. Okay, VPG is good again. We're getting a seven second RPO. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and delete that Windows ZVM. The reason why I'm deleting it and not uninstalling is because if you were to uninstall the Zerto software from that Windows machine, it would basically pull the VRAs out of vCenter, it will delete the VPGs, and then you will have a broken Zerto environment. So uh, best practice here is just to shut it down and get rid of it. Now we're moving on to the recovery site. I'm logged into the Windows Zerto Virtual Manager. I'm going to launch the migration utility. 
and basically repeat the same steps, but this time we're doing everything in the recovery site. We're moving this Windows Zerto instance over to the Linux appliance. Okay, so just like the previous site, um, now we're gonna notice there's a bunch of alerts, errors, things changing colors, uh, but they should write themselves pretty quickly here. And we're gonna get those two warning alerts again that are basically gonna be telling us uh, the VRAs need upgrades. Uh, what you're seeing here though, that's also different is uh, because I had set this lap up in less than 24 hours ago, I don't have a 24 hour journal yet. So um, Zerto's also telling me that I, I'm not meeting my SLA. Um, once I get through the first 24 hours, it'll turn green. Uh, so it's not an issue here. So like our protected site, we're gonna upgrade the VRAs on the recovery site and we're, we'll be that much closer to completing this migration. So as a final step here, let's run a failover test and see what happens. See our VMs getting registered in the recovery site, booting up. So already this is looking good. Zero is communicating with the vCenter, sending all the API calls. VMs are booting up. 
So this looks good. I'm just gonna go ahead and close this down and stop the test. And that concludes our migration. And that, my friends, is a wrap. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if this was helpful for you, please like the video, subscribe for updates, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.